This is Jeff Van Wagenen with the County Executive Office, and this is Report on Conditions. This week, we'll take you to several incidents, including three vegetation fires and a vehicle collision. We will also catch up with Gavin Phillips, who participated in the Warrior Care Program, which bridges military service members to a career in firefighting. Hi, I'm Rob Rosine, and thank you for joining Cal Fire Riverside County Fire Department's Report on Conditions. For the past week from June 19th to June 25th, our firefighters responded to 3,460 calls for service. This included 2,591 medical emergencies and 142 fire-related calls. Of those fire calls, 48 were vegetation fires and 16 were structure fires. Let's check out a few highlighted incidents from the past week. On Tuesday, June 20th at around 9 a.m., firefighters responded to a head-on traffic collision with fire near the interchange of Highway 62 and Interstate 10 near Whitewater. The first arriving engine company officer reported a two-vehicle collision with one vehicle and vegetation burning. With assistance from our cooperating agencies, firefighters were able to hold the vegetation fire to three acres and the vehicle fire to the initial car, containing both within about 30 minutes. Two patients, both with major injuries, were transported to a local trauma center by ground ambulance. Highway 62 was closed in both directions for several hours for cleanup. Just after noon on Tuesday, June 20th, emergency dispatchers received multiple 911 calls about a vegetation fire at the 26,300 block of Garbani Road in the city of Menifee. The first arriving fire engine reported four acres of vegetation burning in light and medium brush. Due to an immediate threat to nearby structures, a request for several more engines and aircraft was made. Evacuation orders and warnings were put into place for the surrounding neighborhoods, but thankfully firefighters were able to contain the fire to the vegetation with no damage to any structure. Firefighters remained on scene through the night working on containment lines, and the fire was fully contained to 43 acres at around 2 p.m. on June 21st. There were no injuries to civilians or firefighters reported. On Tuesday, June 20th at 7.15 p.m., firefighters received reports of a large commercial bus on fire at the maintenance facility of the 9600 block of Galena Street in Harupa Valley. The first arriving engine reported an electric municipal bus on fire with an immediate exposure to 20 other buses. After about 45 minutes, firefighters were able to contain the fire to the bus of origin with no extension. The bus was destroyed and County Environmental Health was requested to assess the electric vehicle component. No injuries were reported. At around 3 o'clock p.m. on Wednesday, June 21st, firefighters responded to a report of a two-vehicle traffic collision with parties trapped at the intersection of Avenue 55 and Van Buren Street in the city of Coachella. The first on-scene engine reported two vehicles with major damage and one on its side. Firefighters used extrication tools to cut one patient who had major injuries out of the vehicle. A second patient had been ejected from the vehicle and also suffered major injuries, while a third patient had minor injuries. The ejected patient was flown via air ambulance, while the other two patients were transported via ground ambulance, all to local trauma centers. Avenue 55 between Van Buren Street and Calhoun Street was closed by the California Highway Patrol while they conducted their investigation. On Friday, June 23rd at around 1 o'clock p.m., firefighters responded to reports of a vegetation fire at the 68,900 block of Fillmore Street in Thermal. Upon arrival, firefighters reported three palm trees on fire in a palm grove with limited access. Once firefighters found a way into the location, they were able to contain the fire to several palm trees and a quarter acre of heavy brush after about four hours. No injuries to civilians or firefighters were reported. Did you know that the lush green annual grass growing in your yard could be putting your home at risk for wildfire damage? With the recent increase in rainfall, seasonal grasses are growing quickly. And when they dry out, they become fuel for wildfires. Don't wait until it's too late to protect your home. Visit rvcfire.org for information on how to create defensible space and reduce the risk of wildfire damage. Every year, thousands of accidents and fires occur due to illegal fireworks and explosives nationwide. Those deafening blasts over our neighborhoods, while car alarms are going off and windows are shaking, our veterans and pets are traumatized. Riverside County has a zero tolerance policy for illegal fireworks. Anyone caught purchasing, lighting, or transporting illegal fireworks is subject to fines up to $5,000. So let's keep the fun and excitement of fireworks to the professionals and enjoy the many public fireworks shows throughout Riverside County. Remember, if you light it, we'll write it. Hi, I'm Chief Scott Philippar with Cal Fire Riverside County Fire Department. Hi, I'm Melody. 
Oh, I'm so excited. I can't wait to go play on the beach. Is there anything I should know before I go? Yeah, today we're gonna go over some water safety tips so you're safe at the lake at all times. Oh, great. Can I swim by myself? You should never swim by yourself. You should always have a parent or guardian watching you while you're in the water at all times. Can my parents play games on their phones while we're in the water? Your phones could be a distraction and you should never have your phone should only be used for emergency purposes only. Who should be watching me while we're in the water? You should always have what we call a water watcher. A water watcher watches all kids and adults that are in the water at all times and they don't have any distractions present. Can I use floaties in the water to help me swim? You should never use floaties. You should always use a Coast Guard approved life safety vest that fits snugly and they make them for both adults and children. Does everyone know how to swim? No, not everybody, but we do offer plenty of water safety courses and swim lessons throughout Riverside County. Oh, great. Thank you, Chief, for all your help. Hello, my name is Dan Parker, training captain for Cal Fire Riverside, and we're at the Ben Clark Training Center. So we're here this week to do a state fire training Firefighter 1 certification exam. So the IFSAC Pro Board Firefighter 1 upgrade is new to CAL FIRE this year due to the change in CAL FIRE's Firefighter Academy from seven weeks to four weeks. And the person attending the academy will need to have a state fire training Firefighter 1 cert, which they will receive upon completion of this training. The state fire training Firefighter 1 exam encompasses three modules, all have a written test and then associated skills with each module. The three modules are the Firefighter 1B, which is hazmat. They have a Firefighter 1C, wildland, and they have a Firefighter 1A, structure. The program is set up for two weeks. One week is a prep week, equaling 40 to 50 hours of training and practice. And the second week is the certification exam which every day is approximately an eight to 10 hour day of written and skills testing. For Riverside, the Firefighter One rank, we estimate that we will put 50 through this program this season. We're currently holding a class for 24 with estimate of 24 to 25 more in the fall. Today we're talking about the completion for Gavin Phillips of uh, training through the Riverside County Fire Department. Gavin came to us from the Marine Corps, which allowed the last six months of his active duty in the Marines to come here and cross train with us so that he can get into the fire service uh, upon his discharge. We're a paramilitaristic type organization, and so when they come in here, they've already got that structure, they understand chain of command, and for the most part, they come in here willing and wanting to work. And that's what we need in the fire service, so people who have that background and are ready to go to work. So in his case, the next step is applying everywhere he can. Hopefully he comes to work for CAL FIRE. That would be the aim. We always want them to you know, look at us first. And so having them in-house going through the training, putting him in a fire station where he's with the crew and integrated with them, running calls, hopefully that's uh, breeding him in the CAL FIRE culture. I knew I wanted to find a job that had some of the similar aspects of the camaraderie, working hard, you know, being outdoors, doing stuff with my hands. The qualifications I ended up receiving, um, I got uh, you know, my BLS and CPR, I've got uh, the actual EMT, you know, national certification and California certification. And then I did uh, CAL FIRE's new program um, for Firefighter 1, which is uh, 1A for structure, 1B for hazmat, and then 1C for wildland. And also did the 1D, which is the orientation portion. Basically, it meets all, all the requirements to be hired um, for, for CAL FIRE. Um, every step of the way, there were people eager to help me and willing to help me to take the time for you know, someone new who didn't really know anything and to kind of walk me through the process. Yeah, I recently um, received a conditional offer in Orange County, so um, I will be hopefully starting an academy over there. I can only do that because I spent the time with CAL FIRE and there's, there's plenty of people that are willing and eager to help and to teach and to, to guide you along that path. So I would just really encourage people to take advantage of the opportunity that's out there. We'd like to say congratulations to the following Riverside County employees on their recent promotions. Veronica Calderon, Accounting Technician 1 in Cost Recovery. Calista Maloney, Decision Support Systems Manager. Gonzalo Ben Barone, Fire Systems Inspector in Lake Elsinore. Claudia Rosado, Buyer 2 in Purchasing. 
For the state, we'd like to congratulate the following newly promoted fire captains. Javon Lozano, Devin LaRiviere, Ryan Miller, Frank Bollinger, Luis Castillo, Brad Fedock, Jason Gumber, Troy Brogdon, Daniel Strickland, Ben Eisger, Derek Gonzalez, Jason Holly, Mark Shearer, Nicholas Juhas, Richard Garcia, Arturo Molina, Anthony Rosales, Enrique Zavala, Richard Solizano, Stephen Legrand, Charles Essling, Ryan Robertson, and Mark Wakeling. That's going to do it for this week's Report on Conditions. Be sure to follow at CalFireRRU on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook to stay up to date on incidents as they occur. Did you happen to capture any photos or videos of our firefighters in action? If so, please send those our way to rrupio at fire.ca.gov. On behalf of your Cal Fire, Riverside County Fire Department, Public Affairs, and Community Education Bureau, I'm Rob Rossi. Thanks for watching.